Mustafa Barghouti, who's the Secretary General of the Palestinian National Initiative and a former Palestinian Information Minister, joins us now from Ramallah. Uh, we're talking about the day after, but it's really a question of how long the day after lasts. Uh, th this buffer perimeter of what, around one kilometre, uh, say the Israelis, inside Gaza, of course, uh, to prevent a repeat of October the 7th, they say. Uh, what's your thought? There is no military value whatsoever of this procedure, but the real, actually, the real intention of this is to shrink uh, Gaza size. We have to remember that Gaza is only 362 square kilometers with 2.3 million people living there. It's the most densely populated area in the world. And now the Israelis want to cut off a big part of it, no less than 15%. It could go up to 25% of that little place. Uh, uh, annexing it practically to Israel. Uh, and this would be perceived only as an act of ethnic cleansing of the whole population that lives in this very important part of Gaza Strip. It is uh, an act to destroy also one of the most important agricultural areas in the, in the, in the place. And, right. uh, you say it would be effectively not, next to uh, Israel. Is that, uh, the Israelis say no one will be there. There will only be mines in this area to prevent people crossing, and they say they need it to maintain security. Yeah, annexed land would land with mines. That's what they want to do. They want mm -hmm. to move their bo for, uh, borders forward into Gaza, destroying the lives of the people of Gaza. And that is, of course, very dangerous. And it should not be accepted, and it should not be allowed. Uh, add to that uh, the, another important factor, in my opinion, their talk about a buffer zone now is, uh, in a way, a recognition of their failure. They failed in the, all their military goals. They failed in enforcing total ethnic cleansing of Gaza. They failed in, in, in destroying the resistance in Gaza. They failed uh, in imposing their domination in the area and their occupation. Uh, these these methods of thinning Gaza, as uh, the ex uh, foreign minister spoke about Cohen, uh, are not going to help anybody. And I think the whole international community must take a very strong stand against this violation of people's rights and of human rights okay. and of the integrity of Palestinian land. And talking about the international community, of course, the United States disagrees uh, with the concept of a buffer zone, but Anthony Blinken, the US Secretary of State, saying that there may be scope for transitional arrangements. What does he mean by that, do you think? Mr. Blinken is only acting as a, as a lawyer for Israel, and he's playing games with his words. When he says transitional, he means he's giving Israel the permit to do this, and the transitional will become permanent. If the United States was serious about its position, they would tell Israel, stop that and end it and don't do it. They would at least tell Israel to stop the, cease, to the, the attack on Gaza and to have a real serious permanent uh, ceasefire, something that the whole world wants. And the only country that is obstructing now is the United States of America. I don't believe Mr. Blinken, and I think he's maneuvering and playing games to support the Israeli intentions. You say that if the United States was serious about it, all they need to do is tell Israel to stop. But uh, isn't Israel operating on its own accord and just ignoring what anybody else says or thinks? No, they can't ignore the United States, because if the United States stays, says that they should stop, they will have to stop. They cannot live without American weapons. They cannot live without American money. They cannot live without American diplomatic support. The United States is a participant, unfortunately, in this war. And as long as they don't support ceasefire, they become participant in the war crimes that are happening in Gaza. It's very serious, very serious. Uh, Mr. Barghouti, appreciate your time. Thanks very much indeed, uh, Mustafa Barghouti, speaking to us there from Ramallah. Thank you.